Hi, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, how to make a step drill. A step drill is a twist drill bit that has a little step cut into it so that it can drill two concentric holes of differing diameters. Or you can use one to drill a larger concentric hole from a smaller pilot. Step drills are widely used in knife making to drill holes for handle fasteners. Most of the common fasteners from rivets to corby fasteners to any of a wide variety of screws use step drills. The basic idea is that you want the head of the screw to seat on a nice square shelf on the handle scale that seats slightly below the face of the handle itself, but not on the actual tang of the blade. This assures maximum mechanical strength for the fastener to handle connection. The step drill we'll be making today is intended for seating a quarter inch Corby fastener, a popular fastener used in knife making. So, why make a step drill instead of buying one? In a word, money. Because you might want a whole bunch of them for different applications and they cost close to 30 bucks a pop from knife making supply places. So the title of this video is 50 ways to make a step drill. Why 50 ways? Well, there was this song back in the 70s by Paul Simon called 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. So, inspired by Paul Simon, uh, well, anyway, why show 50 ways of accomplishing the same end? Here's the philosophy at work. People will always tell you that there's only one way to do this, one way to do that, here's the correct way of whatever. Look, when you make a handmade knife, it's an expression of you. You're constrained by your tools, your shop, your intelligence, your physical limitations, your taste, your view of the world, whatever. So I really believe that you want to go into your shop with an inquiring mind, always looking for a new and interesting way of doing things. Something that will put your personal stamp on your work. To that end, an object lesson in obsessive thinking. So, I recommend using a reasonably inexpensive high-speed steel bit. I bought this one, but if you have an old broken bit, by all means use that one. We'll start with a quarter inch bit, and we'll try to thin it out to 3 16ths of an inch, or 0.175 inches, the smaller diameter of the Corby fastener shaft. For a step drill to work efficiently, it should have a 90 degree shelf between the smaller and larger diameters. This will give a clean seat for your fastener. One thing to bear in mind is that drills are very hard. You can't just file them. So abrasives are the word of the day. Here goes. First method, the twiddle method. Take the drill to your belt grinder and twiddle it around until you narrow it down. Very easy to accomplish. Results? Terrible. It's very hard to freehand a bit to the correct diameter, much less to make it perfectly concentric. Not concentric, it chatters and messes up your hole. Also, hard to make it run perfectly parallel from top to bottom. And the thing that's supposed to be a nice clean 90 degree shelf, well, it's more like a sort of slopey mess. Verdict? <laughs> Method two, drill and twiddle. In this approach, we'll put the drill bit in a hand drill and run the hand drill against the belt. Concentricity problem solved. And it's easier to make the smaller piece run parallel and get a consistent diameter. However, getting it to the exact correct diameter without overshoot could be a pain and we still have a problem with the shelf thing where we transition diameters. Yuck, still no good. Next method, the advanced twiddle jig. Using the drill press, we drill a quarter inch hole through a piece of carefully squared scrap wood. Now we lay a piece of tape running perpendicular to the face of the platen out on our work table. Then we stick the drill bit through the hole. Put the jig on the table, clamp it down with your thumb, twiddle away. This solves concentricity and parallelism and makes it easier to control so we don't overshoot. But that stupid shelf is still causing us problems. Without a clean transition between the two diameters, we're still nowhere.
Method four, drill and dremel. So, we mount the drill gently in our vise, making sure not to crush it. Then, using a cutoff wheel on our dremel, we cut a beautiful, clean, perpendicular shelf. We'll also sort of scrape our way up and down the shaft at a lesser diameter. So we've solved the shelf, we've solved concentricity, but parallelism and consistency, not so much. Next method, using the same piece of scrap wood as we did for our twiddle jig, we use spray adhesives to attach a piece of belt grinder to the wood. Then we turn the bit at maximum speed and cut the secondary diameter by running the sandpaper back and forth, thusly. This will work great if you have seven centuries to finish the job. Method five. Maybe I don't have all those fancy schmancy power tools like drill presses, human power only. Using a small Arkansas stone, we just file away, file away, file away, file away, file away. Okay, no. Next method. Wait, wait, wait. What about diamonds? Diamonds are the hardest substance on earth, right? Using a diamond file or sharpener, we'll file away the smaller bit. We'll file away, we'll, we'll file away, we'll... Uh, yeah, no. Next method. Twiddle jig plus drill and dremel. For this one, we'll start by using the twiddle jig to rough out the smaller diameter. Then we'll go to the drill and dremel to cut the shelf. The only drawback to this is that you can still overshoot and mess things up. Still, all in all, not bad. Take it slowly and you're golden. Method nine, take your drill bit to your nice big tool room lathe, chuck it up, load up a carbide cutter into your quick change tool post and lathe this baby into submission. Concentricity and parallelism, solved. Correct measure right down to the thousandth, a snap. Clean 90 degree shelf, perfect. Two things. First, you need the right grade of carbide. You're cutting hardened tool steel here, so you have to be very, very careful. A lot can go wrong. If you don't use one of the more shock resistant grades of carbide, the shock of your drill bit lands whacking the tool will chip your tool out of existence in about half a second. Or break your drill bit. I did that too. Second problem, oh yeah. If you haven't plunked down a few grand on a big old lathe, then obviously this method is not for you. Method 10. Okay, so I lied. It's not 50 ways of making a step drill, it's 10. Or 9, or 8. I lost count. Anyway, I never liked that Paul Simon song anyway. Honestly, I never liked anything Paul Simon did after Garfunkel took all his hair and went off into the sunset. Does that make me a bad person? Anyway, I feel pretty good about the twiddle jig plus the drill and dremel method. Looky there. It works. So, here's my broader point. Making knives isn't about cracking open a cookbook and following the directions. Try stuff. If it works, great. If it doesn't, that doesn't make you a loser, it makes you a pioneer, a bold go-getter dude. That's why knife making is fun. Failure is fun. After you get finished cussing, kicking the dog, and throwing tools around your shop, I mean. Want to see the step drill used in an actual knife? Click here. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you can find more of my work. You'll also find plenty more videos there that you can't find on YouTube with very, very detailed information about all aspects of Japanese blade making. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrels Blades.